بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه أجمعين um, We have reached the chapter of reinforcement Remember we, we started talking about the followers of Marfu nouns We discussed uh, adjectives and we discussed uh, conjunctions and inshallah today we will discuss uh, reinforcements uh, reinforcements these are words that are used to put emphasis on us on a particular uh, noun or or a particle or even a verb but today uh, for 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 this uh, sim uh for since this is a beginner's class we'll only discuss the uh the nouns reinforcement for the nouns and that is what the author does so we'll follow what he does so the author says rahimahullah at-tawkidu tabi'un lil mu'akkadi fi raf'ihi wa nasbihi wa khafdihi wa ta'rifihi wa yakunu bi alfadhin ma'lumah wa hiya an-nafs wal 'ayn wa kullu wa ajma'u wa tawabi'u ajma'a wa hiya akta'u wa abta'u wa absa'u تقول قام زيد نفسه ورأيت القوم كلهم ورأيت ومررت بالقوم أجمعين ومررت بالقوم أجمعين. Let's go back to the slides and if you guys could follow the translation. Reinforcement <coughs> follows the reinforced and I will explain that in a second. And it's رفع نصب خفض and definite this. So what do, as I said, uh, maybe it's still a bit unclear for you guys, what does it mean for something to reinforce something else? What does it mean to emphasize, uh, for something to emphasize something else when it comes to grammar? You're just, for example, you say, you say a noun, you mention a name, and uh, you're afraid that uh, someone may misunderstand you, so you repeat, uh, you say something after that name, to emphasize, to, to reinforce your statement regarding that name, regarding that person. So uh, an, exa an example would, uh, of this would be um, Zaid himself, or uh, maybe a better example would be uh, Salahuddin himself rose. Salahuddin himself rose. Uh, why do we add himself here? Because Salah Adin, as you guys know, was a was a great commander, right? So, some for someone, uh, if I said Salah Adin rose, some people may think he he rose, meaning his army rose from the Middle East and and defeated the enemies, right? Uh, but when I say Salah Adin himself rose, then it takes away that ambiguity. Meaning, no one will, uh, people will no longer think that Salah Adin metaphorically rose, meaning his army rose and, and defeated the enemy, but rather Salah Adin was sitting down, he rose. You know, you don't have to make it too complicated. Uh, that's what, uh, that's one of the, uh, you know, um, one, of the, one of the benefits of emphasis. It, 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 it just blocks away uh, the, the possibility of like two metaphorical and poetic meanings. So Salah Adin himself rose. Don't get too uh, too too uh, um, uh, too excited, so to speak. Uh, there is no army here. Um, does that make sense? Thumbs up or yeses? Yes, brother. It made sense. So where is the emphasis part? The emphasis is himself, right? If I said, if I said Salah Hadin himself rose, the emphasis or the reinforcement is himself. Is himself, and himself basically and nafs is 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 that. So I would if I if I was to write it in Arabic, I would say. Qama salahuddinu 
nafsu. So in this case, since Salahuddin is the Qama is a verb, right? So what is Salahuddin here? What what type of noun is Salahuddin? Salahuddin. You guys should know this. Well, how many times we had? Uh, so the verb requires a subject and an object. Is Salahuddin the subject or the object? He rose. It's the subject, so verbal subject, is it? Verbal subject, very good. So the verbal subject, we said verbal subject is marfo. Therefore, and since the reinforced follows the re, uh, the reinforcement follows the reinforced, therefore nafsuhu also becomes marfo, right? Nafsuhu also becomes marfo. Okay, um, and then there are different, we said, uh, and the author says, And reinforcement is made with designated words, meaning these words are pre-designated uh, and we cannot just come up with any name. Uh, so, and uh, also the, the author doesn't mention something there. We have the... Um, Um, there are two type of types of reinforcement. The uh, the author talks about the um, the explicit or how can I explain how to translate this? The type of uh, the, the author is talking about the ma'nawi reinforcement, which um, which is not uh, using the same word as the reinforced. So, for example, if I said uh, Salahuddin, Salahuddin himself came, I said Salahuddin twice, right? Uh, the second Salahuddin is emphasis, is reinforcement. And, uh, but, so in regards to that type of emphasis or reinforcement, uh, there are no pre-designated words. You can just use the same noun that you want to reinforce. You can repeat it multiple times or the same verb or the same particle. That becomes reinforcement, but when it when we're talking about the implicit reinforcement, meaning the re reinforcement that is not using the same noun, that type of re reinforcement is done is made with using designated words, and the words that we are talking about today are those words that are used for reinforcement. So, so as I said, nafsuhu is one of them, and then another one is. Ainuhu or al ain So Ain which means essence. Um, Uh, which it, it means essence, and it is similar to uh, basically it's used in a similar way to nafsuhu. For example, I can say uh, um, I can say um, yeah, I can say qama zaydun aynuhu, so to speak, meaning. Uh, Zaid got up his essence, meaning himself, like nothing outside of him. This is also not metaphorical. Um, I know in English we don't use uh, essence in this in this in this in this sense, but in Arabic you can use ain for emphasis in that sense. You meaning you're saying I'm not talking about anything outside of him. I'm talking about himself, the essence of of that person, or the essence of that thing. Um, um, you know. Uh, something else I can say is um, uh, uh, right? or um, um, 
Let me see what example the, uh, the author gives. I'm trying to come up with an example that I can translate to English and it will make sense, which, which I'm, I'm not sure if I can find such an example. But let's see. You never know. Let's see. Yeah, so I guess there's no way around it. The, so basically, Ein, uh, if I was to translate Ein to English, I would translate it as himself, as self again. I wouldn't translate it as essence because essence wouldn't make sense. Essence is not used in that sense. Uh, it's not used for enforcement in English. But then I can just say, uh, essence, which basically would translate to himself or uh, self, right? So I can say, I can use the same example as before. Uh, meaning the, the commander came himself. Some people may think that the commander came with his army, but no, we're talking about the com commander himself. He came himself. Um, Does this make sense? Uh, and I apologize uh, if this becomes a bit confusing, but when you translate, sometimes you, you run into these issues. Okay, Wakullu uh, is another example. Um, <clears throat> Kullu means all. You say, for example, uh, and this is usually done with uh, with thing uh, with things that has either parts or uh, components or a group. Uh, it's used with uh, with things that have components or used with groups. For example, I could say. Um, Akeltu Tama Kulu. I ate the food, all of it. I ate all the food. Right? Ta'am because food has you know has different components, you know. Uh, you can divide the food. So you, when you say I ate the food, some people may think you may not have finished the food, but then you say kulluhu, meaning uh, kullahu, meaning all of it. Uh, or you can say Another example will come up, which the author himself gives us. So I won't, uh, I won't mention it here. Uh, so akeltu ta'ama kullahu. It means um, I ate all the food. I ate all of the food. And Sallan Nas Ajma'un means um, the people prayed collectively. Uh, Ajma is another name for emphasis. For example, if I say Sallan Nasu, it means people prayed. But if I, uh, some people may think some people did not, you know, people prayed, but a few, uh, Zaid and 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 and, uh, and Amr were busy beating each other up, so they, they didn't get to pray. And then I say Ajma'un, oh, okay, Ajma'un, meaning uh, Zaid and Amr also uh, gave it a break for a second and went and prayed, right? Um, collectively, all of them. There were no exceptions. And then... So we have discussed four. The next one, the last one is the followers of Ajma. <clears throat> Sometimes 
ajma is used in a very interesting way in Arabic. Uh, so there are different words that you can use after ajma, which which add even more emphasis to ajma, which means collectively or, or all of them. And those those words are akta, abta, well, and absa. And these we don't really necessarily need to know their meanings. Uh, even though they do have meanings that are befitting for emphasis, but we don't necessarily need to know their meaning because it becomes complicated trying to understand how it relates to emphasis. But just realize when ajma is followed by akta, abta, or absa, it is it, it even reinforces it even more. Right. So just take the meaning of ajma itself and reinforce it even more. Right, ajma, which means collectively. With these three, you can reinforce that meaning, which is collectively even even more. Right. So if you want to make leave no doubt in the in the in the in the mind of the of the listener that uh, anyone may have uh, you know been missing or anyone may have missed out, uh, you you basically you follow you may you uh, follow up uh, you. Attach akta, abta, and absa to uh, to the end of ajma. You say ajma wa akta wa abta wa absa. For example, you say sallan nas wa ajma ajmauna aktauna abtauna absauna. It becomes very long, but it puts emphasis. Um, and here, the, the reason I did not say ajma and I said ajma'una, I added the waw and a noon. So this is a good question for you guys. Does anyone know why I added the waw and a noon? You're making it plural because yes. this is collective, right? Yeah, because there are people, right? There are many people, so I have to make it plural. <clears throat> Very good. And then, so th then we move on to examples. The first example that the author gives is Qama Zayd al Nafsuhu. Zayd himself rose. Again, this is in case anyone, um, you know, thinks of this, uh, takes a metaphor metaphorical meaning uh, uh, from the phrase, from the sentence Zayd rose or Zayd stood. And then the, the next example is Raitul Qawma Kullahum. I saw the nation or I saw um, So I saw the people, I guess. That's the best. I saw the people, all of them. I saw the people, all of them. Or collectively, meaning they were all together when I saw them. <clears throat> I saw the people, all of them, and then I right, answer. This would be only all of them. I saw the people, all of them, and then wamaratu bil qawmi ajma'in. I passed by the people, all of them, or I passed by the uh, by the people collectively. Meaning, when I passed by these people, they were not spread out. They were not. Uh, they were densely packed. They were not sparse. Right, they were collected. They were in a gathering. So when I say ajma'in, that means I, I passed. The, uh, I passed by the people while they're in a state of a gathering, and uh, or and also while all of them, not just a few of them. I guess that's the main point we want to take away here. Not not the fact that they were gathered, but rather because they were. Um, you, we saw we we passed by all of them. Not just a few of them, and I passed by the people, all of them. I think in this case, uh, all of them would be a better translation than collectively. So again, here we add a ya yeah and an <coughs> we add a ya yeah and a nun. Does anyone know why we're adding a ya yeah and a nun here? Think of the the fact that bil qawm has one of the particles of khafad. So qawm becomes makhfud.
All right. Qawm becomes mahfud, uh, and then therefore ajma'in becomes what? If qawm is mahfud, what does ajma'in ajma become? Khafud is low. Exactly, khafud. Uh, exactly. Uh, if qawm is mahfud, then ajma'in is mahfud as well, because it is following qawm. Uh, so then, now I made it easier for you. Why do we add a ya and a noon and, a, and not a wow and a noon here? <clears throat> Remember to make a noun plural. If we want to make, if the noun is, is not for, we add a wow and a noon. But if a noun is mansub or makhfud, we, we add a ya and a noon. Uh, to make it a plural. So yeah, and this the siya yeah, and this noon, both of them indicate uh, basically they're used to make it plural. But the reason there are, uh, we're using a ya yeah and not a, and not a wow is because ajma'in here is mahfud. Its inflection is khaf. That was a bit more trickier uh, than the other questions. So. Uh, sorry, brother. A very quick question. What yeah. was the sign of khafad in uh, Yakuma? Yakumi, was it? Yakumi. Bilqawmi, this one? Yes. Uh, yeah, bil Bilqawmi, sorry. Bilqawmi, the, the sign of khafad is uh, Kasra, right? Because it's a Kasra. singular now. Uh, ah, okay. So, um, even though in meaning it is plural, it's uh, in, 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 in writing and it, it, is, it is a single word. Therefore, we treat it as a sing uh, singular noun. We do not look at the the its meaning, rather, but rather we look at its uh, its writing. It, um, but when you when you try to reinforce it, we reinforce it based on the meaning, which becomes a bit confusing, right? We 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 reinforce it based on the meaning. Uh, so, qawm is, is people, right? And people are, are plural. But even you don't say peoples, right? I know some people say peoples. I've never like I need to figure out if that's even. Um, I don't know. Yeah, but you don't. Uh, I, I guess if if you want to say there are multiple types of people, um, I guess maybe you could. I don't know. So I'm not sure. But anyhow, uh, people you don't make it plural, right? Because it's already plural. The meaning of it is plural, so you don't say peoples. Uh, for basically the same same uh, um, same group of people, so uh, qawm is the same thing, right? Qawm means people, and therefore uh, you don't you don't when writing it you don't add the sign of plurality to it, so you don't add a wow and a noon to it. You, you don't say qawmuna, you don't say that. You just leave it as qawm because it's our, the meaning of it is plural. Uh, but, but since it is only a single word, we treat it as a singular noun and we give the its, its inflection will be the inflection of a singular noun. However, when we try to give it an adjective or if we try to emphasize it, we make sure we take the meaning of it into consideration. The meaning of it, which is plural, therefore the adjective will be plural or the, the reinforcement or the emphasis will be uh, plural as well. Does that make sense, Brother Fahad? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, Brother. Jazakallah khairan. Barakallah khairan. Very good question. Very good question. <clears throat> okay, so inshallah, this is the last of uh, today's class. We, uh, if we start a badal, uh, we probably will take a long time. So inshallah, we'll leave badal, uh, which is replacement, the last the last follower. Um, the last follower of Marfo nouns. Inshallah, <coughs> we'll, we will leave that for next week. Do you guys have any questions? Sorry, brother, just one more question. Yeah. Uh, um, in slide 109, 109. Yeah. Uh, uh, where is it? There's a lag, yeah. yeah. So, oh, sorry, brother. Um, you know how uh, you highlighted uh, the Dhamma in Ha? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but the the full name is Salahuddin, so shouldn't there be like a Dhamma after noon? Yeah, so um, I didn't get it. Okay. Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, when so Salahuddin is um, 
is a type of name. It's an it's an it's a name that is um, murakab. Murakab means a phrase. It's a name which is a phrase. Why? Because Salahuddin means the uh, the um, the upright of religion, um, Salah, or um, how can we translate this? Salahuddin, <clears throat> the the good of religion, so to speak, the good of religion. Um, yeah, I need to come up with a good translation of this, but it is made up of two words. Salah ad-Din, even though it is, a, it is a noun of a person, it is a name of a person, it is made up of two words, so it is a phrase. It is murakkab. We call it murakkab idafi. <clears throat> and this murakkab, when you have two, when you have a phrase as a name, uh, when you have a phrase that is uh, an associative phrase, meaning you're associating something to something else, you're associating salah, which is me, which means goodness or um, to religion. <clears throat> uh, it becomes um, you consider the first half of the phrase uh, when you when you uh, are trying to figure out the inflection or when you when you're trying to give it an inflection, good. Because the second half of the phrase, because it is mudaf ilayhi, we have not discussed this in detail. <clears throat> because it is uh, a phrase uh, you're in, in which you're associating something to something else, the uh, the thing which you're associating um, the first thing to, for example, if I said qalamu zayd, the pen of zayd, I am associating the pen to whom? Hello, to, to zayd. To zayd, to very good. So <clears throat> here, Salah al -Din, I'm associating Salah to Deen. A Deen is religion. So that which would, uh, to which you're associating to, that to which you're associating is always, um, it, all, it is always Mahfud. <clears throat> that is the rule. Mudaf, we call this Mudaf Ilayhi. Mudaf Ilayhi is always Mahfud. So we cannot change the inflection of this because this will be always and this is a bit um, advanced for you guys, perhaps. Uh, but anyhow, since you ask, so ad-din will always be mahfud because we're uh, we're associating salah to it, just like qalamu zaydin. Zayd will always be mahfud, <clears throat> the pen of zayd. So what we are left with is salah, and salah is what we can tweak and change uh, to show the inflection. And since in this case it is the verbal subject. We will give it an inflection of offer. Um, but the tricky, the main point to to keep in mind here is that this is a noun or this is a name. This is a name that is a phrase. That is a associative uh, phrase indicating association. And when in the phrases that indicate association, you always consider or you uh, what you look at what you the inflections go on the noun which you're associating to something else and that which you're associating to will always be mahfud. Does this make sense? Brother Fad, I know it may be a bit com complicated, but... Uh, no, it, it makes sense, brother. Uh, all good. Okay. So, <laughs> so let's say for brother Nuruddin, it can change to Nuruddin or uh, yeah. It depends on the uh, sentence, right? <laughs> Sorry, rather. <laughs> I hope you don't take offense. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good example. So, for example, you say, Ja'a Nuruddin with a Dhamma. And then you say, Ra'aytu. You say, Ra'aytu Nuruddin. Nuruddin. And Ad-Din is always Mahfud. You say, Ja'a Nuruddin. Ja'a Nuruddini. Ra'aytu Nuruddini. Maratu bi Nuruddini. So, uh, you, you only... You only change the nur part the adin part will remain the same a good uh, it's a good uh, same thing with nasr adin and same thing with uh, uh, with khadr uh, adin and same thing with alim adin maratu bi alim raaitu or ja alim adini raaitu alim adini maratu bi alim adini see so every time Every time we say that, uh, the brothers, like when you say, uh, uh, when we make them marfo, they raise their head. When we make them mansoub, they kind of twist. 
change the, their head to the side. And then when we make a mahfoul, they uh, lower their head. That would be funny if that happened, right? Every time you made a noun marfu and mahfoul, uh, the person's head moved. <clears throat> Anyhow, a bad joke, but it's fine. If you guys laughed, you're all muted. Uh, feel free to unmute yourself so I know my jokes are funny. Um, yeah, nothing. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> ah, brother, I'm trying to react. Uh, the the laughter emoji, but yeah, it's not working. <laughs> cool. All right. So, uh, any more questions? So if no more questions, I'll stop the recording. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa adbai ajma'in. Subhana rabbika rabbil azzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khairan.